Why, hello, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. It's your Uncle Eric here. You know, every day Eric has a lot to be thankful for this Thanksgiving, especially all of you great subscribers who make this all possible. As a little sign of appreciation, I thought I would read to you a holiday classic. You know, something that really captures the spirit of the holidays. So gather around the children, make yourself a nice hot cup of cocoa, sit back and relax as I read to you a Die Hard Christmas. A Die Hard Christmas, the illustrated classic, written by Doogie Horner and illustrated by J.J. Harrison. Twas the night before Christmas, and up in the tower, everyone was partying except one wallflower. John McLean missed his wife. Things just weren't the same, since Holly had moved west and changed her last name. He tried to win her back, but still she said no. Unbeknownst to them, there was trouble below. A truck had pulled up, and who should disembark but fourteen men whose intentions were dark. They spoke not a word and unloaded big crates. They cut the phone lines and locked all the gates. Carl swept the ground floor, shooting every guard dead, while visions of bearer bonds danced in his head. John took off his shoes, making fists with his toes. It actually worked. Well, what do you know? When out in the lobby there arose such a clatter, he sprung to the door to see what was the matter. When what to his wandering eyes should appear, holy crap, there are terrorists here. John hid under the table where no one could see and watched Hans question Mr. Takagi. I'm going to count to three. There will not be a four. Give me the codes to open the vault door. I don't know the codes, so go ahead and shoot. Okay, said Hans Gruber, and ruined Takagi's suit. John tried to call the cops by pulling an alarm, but instead called the bad guys who tried to cause him harm. But John killed Tony, who had very small feet, and sent him to the terrorists as a yuletide treat. He put a Santa hat on the German, and eyes all aglow wrote, now I have a machine gun, ho, ho, ho. Carl was furious, Tony was his brother. He chased John across the roof and they shot at each other. John was able to escape through the ventilation shafts. Come out to the coast, he sighed, we'll have a few laughs. At Nakatomi Tower, Sergeant Powell appeared. He checked the whole lobby and saw nothing weird. He was pulling away but didn't get far before Marco landed on the hood of his car. Powell drove away backwards, screaming in fright. Welcome to the party, pal, John yelled with delight. More police arrived, the FBI and a SWAT team, but Hans didn't mind, it was all part of his scheme. More rapid than eagles, his henchmen they came, and he radioed and shouted and called them by name. Now Eddie, now James, now Franco, now Uli, on Fritz, and on Carl, hair long and unruly. They shot the SWAT tank with a surface-to-air missile and knocked it away like the down of a thistle. Now John McClane was angry indeed. He blew up two terrorists and called them jerkweed. Ellis told Hans, Bubby, I'm your white knight. Hans shot him dead, giving the hostages a fright. Hans went to go check on the explosives fuse and saw that poor John wasn't wearing any shoes. John fled from Carl and Hans, but alas, he had run barefoot over sharp broken glass. His feet, how they hurt, his soles, oh so bloody. John crawled to the bathroom and called his good buddy. John was weary and ready to throw in the towel until he got a pep talk from Sergeant Al Powell. Powell was chubby and plump, a right jolly cop, and he trusted the cowboy in the tattered tank top. But a reporter was probing into McLean's life and revealed that Holly was actually John's wife. Hans quickly flipped over the gold picture frame 
It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. McLean. His clothes all tarnished with ashes and soot, John staggered to the roof, bloody and barefoot. The explosives were wired to the rooftop with care in hopes that the hostages would soon be there. John warned everyone the roof would soon blow as the chopper strafed him with high-powered ammo. Around his waist, he tied a fire hose tight and, screaming an oath, jumped into the night. He dangled in the air and gritted his teeth while flames encircled the tower like a wreath. Fiercely fighting his way back inside, John yelled out, Hans! He was done trying to hide. He limped to the vault like an old man on crutches, only to find Holly in his filthy clutches. John dropped his gun, put his hands on his head. It seemed he and Holly soon would be dead. But with a secret gun taped to his back, John shot Hans in a surprise attack. Hans fell out the window, still holding Holly's arm, and slowly, deliberately raised his firearm. The tenacious villain held on by his nails, till John unhooked Holly's watch and said, Happy trails! Bearer bonds fluttered like fresh fallen snow, as Holly embraced her blood-spattered bow. So Merry Christmas to all, be kind to one another, and most of all, Yippee Kaye, motherfucker! What a timeless tale. Everybody have a great Thanksgiving, a great day, a great week. I will see you soon. And as always, I will see you on the new.